Hello, I'm Dr. Crystal Mercia for Contemporary Pediatrics. Today I'll be discussing food allergies in children with Dr. Corinne Keat. Dr. Keat is an assistant professor of pediatrics at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, and her research on food allergy prevalence was recently published in the Annals of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. Dr. Keat, can you tell us a bit about your analysis of self-reported food allergies? Sure. So in this study, we did a, a meta-analysis, which is a compilation of uh, data that's published in the literature, and in this case we also looked at some unpublished data, and uh, looked at prevalence of food allergy as reported in these surveys that the U.S. CDC has done um, over the past 20 years, and looked to see if there were changes in the prevalence over time, and if there were certain subgroups that had uh, changing prevalence, either increased over time, or that the, whether that was stable. Um, and so what we found was that sort of similar to what we all uh, perceive in, in the world in general is that um, this, that there is an increase in rate of, of prevalence of food allergy over time um, and that this was most marked, um, surprisingly, in African American children. Um, so in general, we found um, that, we estimated that it was about a 1.2 percentage point, so 1.2 people per 100 um, increase over per decade in general and that in, among um, black children, there was an increase of about 2.1 per 100 um, per decade. And so uh, that was what we found. The important uh, limitation of this, of course, is that all these surveys were of self-reported food allergy. And we know that that's not a great way of assessing food allergy because lots of people um, believe they have food allergy and really what the symptoms that they're, they have are really can be attributed to other things to intolerances or to other diseases or just to sort of normal symptoms and are not really related to food allergy. So um, the best way to, to ass really assess for food allergy is to eat in food challenge, but these kinds of large national surveys, you can't really do food challenge. So, so this is the kind of data that we have. Um, you have so when you're um, you know, looking at this, you found an increase. So what do you think might be driving this apparent increase in food allergy prevalence, particularly within the certain patient populations that you mentioned? Yes. So I'm not sure. I don't have a great explanation for why it might be that uh, black children have experienced more increase, uh, increase in prevalence of food allergy. I think one possibility is that um, the sort of rates of diagnosis or underdiagnosis have changed over time. I think in general, though, there's a, um, a number of theories for why food allergy particular and other allergic diseases might be increasing in prevalence. The most common theory sort of um, over the long term, even more than over the last two decades, is uh, what's called the hygiene hypothesis where uh, uh, the, in the past we were all exposed to much more infectious diseases during early childhood and uh, while we were in utero and that those kinds of microbial exposures have changed over time and have and because of that change in the microbial exposures, our immune system is reacting differently, and that includes reacting differently to things that are, you know, should be innocuous, like food, proteins, um, and that's over time. But there are a lot of other theories, too, that we've investigated or other people have investigated. Some theories relate to the timing of food introduction, and so in the past we thought that too early food introduction might be cause increased risk of food allergy and now we're starting to think that maybe too late introduction of food allergens might be causing that, although we really, that's a question that has a lot of controversy and I think we don't know. Other theories include um, the role of um, other aspects of our diet, so things like vitamins. Um, one intriguing recent theory for increases in um, allergic prevalence is folate or folic acid, which has been supplemented or fortified in our foods and and supplementation has increased starting in the mid to late 1990s and that coincided with the uptick in allergic diseases and there's some animal data that um, folic acid might increase uh, risk for food allergy or not food allergy but I'm sorry allergic diseases particularly asthma and then there's some small uh, data epidemiologic data that that might be a risk factor some people have also proposed vitamin D although the data is not that strong for vitamin D. So I think there's a number of theories that are currently being explored. I don't have, I don't think any one of them has really um, very strong data to show that this is a cause of increased food allergy, but they're all being actively pursued. 
So how do you think that your findings will impact the community pediatrician and how they approach food allergies in children with suspected food allergy? Yeah, so I've, um, related to this paper, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, well, um, I always thought that food allergy was a disease of the affluent and I will only see pictures of white children with food allergy and I think, um, you know, in, as a practicing uh, pediatrician, uh, practicing allergist, I, I know that that's not true, but I think we, as a community, we also need to make sure we understand that food allergy is not just a, a disease of affluence and make sure that we diagnose it and look for it in, in other um, communities, other ethnic groups besides just, you know, obviously it's not just a disease of white people, but um, in, in, every, in everyone. Um, otherwise, I think there is a, per, a perception among uh, community practitioners that food allergy prevalence has increased over time, and I think this is another source of data, uh, although with some limitations, that Well, thank you, Dr. Keat, for joining me today. For more information on this topic, please see Dr. Keat's article in the March issue of the Annals of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. This has been Dr. Crystal Marcia for Contemporary Pediatrics.